In this episode, I'm going to cover using logging to debug. I'll start off by wiring up some simple logging, then I'll wire up a Java logger. So to get started, I'm going to go to the application that I created in the previous episode. So the thing I want to do is show how to wire up simple logging. So I'm going to add some new space to the on module load. And then what I want to do is go quit.log. And then I'm going to go, this is my simple logging. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to try it out and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go up to the debug icon and launch the debugging process. Once the process is started, I'm going to double click and open up the Chrome browser. And there I go. Well, since the dev tools are not open, it marshals the console logging to the IDE. That's because the Chrome JS debugger pushes it to the IDE. So the next step is I want to look at the logging with the Java logger. So how do I do that? I'm going to go up to the top of the class and I want to add a logger member. So private static final logger logger and I'm going to go logger dot get logger and I could use a simple name here simple name here but I'm going to use the class name simple name instead to tell me what the logger is my and I'm going to use autocomplete with control space class dot get simple name so now that my logger is instantiated I want to copy that and go logger dot info and this is my Java logger. So what's the difference between these two? One, this is simple logging. I only recommend using this when you're doing debugging on the fly. And when you want long-term logging, I would define a logger and use this. So I'm using logger info, but there are a couple other logger types you could use. You go logger info, or I could go warn, warning, and I could say this is a warning and I could change the logging level in the module descriptor. And how would I do that? Let's look at that. Now go to the document, the guide, and show you how to do that. So the logging guide explains all the things you can do with logging, and I won't cover all these details in this video, but in particular, I wanna look at the log level. By default, it's set to info, but if I wanted to copy this and put it in the module descriptor, I could set it to trace, debug, info, warn, severe, and I won't cover all those levels here, but this document will help you to get started. So I'm going to go back to the IDE. So the next step is I'm going to run the process by going to the browser and reloading it and see what it looks like. And there I go. I have the simple logging, which I already printed out the first time. And then the second time I refreshed it, it I added two other logging events one from the logger info and one from the logger warning. This logger can be turned on during the debugging process and can be turned off by the switch, the setting switch in the module descriptor. So it's best to use the logger info warning severe whatnot when you want to add logging permanently, but when you're on the fly and you're adding logging quickly, you could go gwit.log here's something simple and then come back and delete it. So I'm going to delete it just like if it was a real app and let's just add, move this around a little bit and go, okay, what should I say here? I'll go started and, and I'll say finished. And then if I go to the Chrome and reload, it says started and finished. Well, one more thing I would like to show is just opening up the Chrome Dev Tools and then reloading the application. And there it is, started and finished. The same console output, except it's not marshaled to the IDE this time. So this concludes this episode today on how to wire up logging in your debugging process. Thanks for watching. Follow me for more tips and tricks on GXT, and I'll catch you later.